Hi everyone this is Shanti signing in with another episode of Shanti Finance. Earth Day is just around the corner so just like the last couple of years I got to uh, present another I've got to do another Earth Day painting and so this tutorial is all about that Earth Day painting. This is a continuation however uh, of uh, my painting from the last tutorial where i painted the background so if you're interested in how i painted this colorful clouds and uh, colorful clouds and sunset background this exact one then you can check that video out i will link that in the video description below and i'll have a, a link pop up as well also i have linked all my previous uh, earth day paintings in the video description below you can check those out as well so without much ado let's get into this particular painting and tutorial so obviously like i just mentioned i did the background which is kind of like a landscape sunset clouds with a lot of colorful clouds setting and uh, you would see that in this painting i have done like the bottom part has much less things going on than the top part and that is kind of uh, intuitive because i have a lot um to sh uh, my subject is more on the bottom part so i kept the bottom part more simple to direct the viewer's attention accordingly now once the background was completely dry i took a white charcoal pencil and a ruler and uh, free handed this an hourglass and the bird and it it took me a little bit time and patience to get the hourglass right because you know these kind of things hourglass and that that has kind of bit of a proportion thing going on a symmetry thing going on are a little bit uh, difficult in the sense they take a little bit of patience and time so give it a little bit of patience and time if you are uh, trying to paint draw something like this and make sure is drawing is your is a cure accurate before you start painting so once my hourglass the bird and the earth inside the hourglass uh, was drawn out i started with the painting and initially uh, with the rim of the hourglass i started with a very dark mix of uh, raw burnt sienna and uh, black so it has a lot of burnt sienna and a little bit of black so it's kind of almost black looking and some of the edges and parts i have left it a little bit lighter so i've added a little bit of lighter raw umber and uh, um, and lighter brown tones and a little bit of yellow as well i have used my naples yellow over here to get this lighter yellow color this kind of uh, gives you the impression of the reflection of the light around this object so it's kind of like gives you the illusion of shiny wooden object also i had to be super careful in throughout this painting to get all the straight lines right because um this kind of is an object that has to be painted accurately the hourglass and um the rims and everything those need to be very accurate so it's not like leaves or flowers which you can you know manipulate a little bit anyways on to the body of the hourglass you can see that and i am first what i'm doing is i'm outlining the entire um, hourglass with white and then i am smudging the edge of the white outline little just a little bit now some of the areas i'm pulling down the white to kind of give the Im impression of how glass reflects light so if you've seen an hourglass or any glass object for that matter a glass jar or anything it does not it does not look transparent everywhere depending on from the light source and the different effects it kind of somewhere it shows some white streaks or you know depending on the color around it it might be gray as well streaks also so i did that and then at the bottom of the hourglass i'm painting some amount of debris so there's nothing much to it i took a bristle brush and some dark color of mix you can do any kind of brown or black mix May maybe add a throw in a little bit of blue to it and add to the debris and you can see that i'm adding a little bit color to the bottom debris as well just outside the hourglass at this point i'm adding a little bit of texture element to the 
bottom debris and the debris inside the hourglass and what i'm doing is i'm creating a lighter mix mix of the same brown black mix by adding a little bit of yellow and white do not add too much of white otherwise it would look very artificial kind of like sparkly white and it wouldn't look like dirt that you want it to look like now onto the earth i am using thalo blue and i have a little bit of white mixed with it or a little bit of black mixed with it depending on whether i'm painting on the sides or in the center so that it gives me good coverage because there is yellow in the background so if i put blue on top of it just blue then it will probably become green and i do not want the green in all areas i'm wanting to be predominantly bluish so adding the white or black uh, which is titanium white and Mars black kind of uh, gives me more opacity to get the color blue that I want While the paint is still wet. I started on adding a little bit of white mix Which is not technically white. It's a lighter shade of blue actually I just added a little bit more blue to that mix and the center I'm painting like a piece of the earth and some of the areas I'll leave brown and some of the areas of the earth uh, or the map or whatever land impression I'll leave it brown and green and even some of the blues to, to outline it added some yellows in between to get a very natural look and uh, you can see that this uh, paint is still wet and it does not matter because it does not have to be absolutely precise I was not going to uh, make it absolutely precise I was going for a okay earthish look it, it should look definitely round and spherical and some like land like face features and uh, because all of a lot of it is going to be covered by the clouds that i'm later going to put on top of the land or the water of the earth so i'm keeping on working wet on wet and you can see that on the sides i'm adding a lot more color dark colors like blacks and blues and uh, then in the center part and this automatically gives you the illusion of a 3d dimensional object if the sides are darker and the central part is lighter when you look at it from the front it kind of looks like a circular spherical object and that is a three-dimensional realistic look i'm going for once the earth is painted i'm, I'm like adding the uh, elements of debris that is falling from the earth to the bottom collected debris i guess now it's pretty evident to you what i am trying to do i'm kind of uh, depicting a broken earth that is reducing down to debris and we have very little time to protect our earth i, I guess it did not need any um explanation but i just thought i'd add a sentence or two last part of the painting is this little bird this little chickadee and i love painting birds and this has been a long time since i had a painting a bird in fact i wanted to uh, do a separate tutorial on this bird but then i thought oh i'll paint another bird some other time uh, for a separate tutorial on how to paint birds anyways on the chickadee i first covered the entire area of the body with a gray tone so i have a lot of white and mixed with a little bit of black and blue with it to create the gray tones to cover all of the areas this is because whatever colors lighter colors of yellow and uh, browns that i want to put on the body of the bird that will not show up unless i put something opaque at the bottom uh, if i don't do that then when i put yellow it will kind of be glazing over the background clouds and it will have a very unnatural green look that i'm not going for so i had to paint first an opaque layer and i chose gray because that was kind of the mid-tone that i was looking at the bird reference picture and the reference photo of this bird is kind of from pixabay however i've manipulated the posture a little bit to meet my requirements i wanted the bird to peek inside um, the hourglass um, so i had to change the posture a little bit otherwise it's kind of a chickadee uh, reference picture from pixabay anyways on to the bird painting you can see that i'm working wet on wet quite a bit and it's not necessary to work wet on wet if your paint dries because this is acrylic paint and it dries pretty fast you can uh, work dry wet on top of dry layers and kind of smudge them and do accordingly i'm 
paying very close attention to the reference photo and putting in the darker shadows first after the midtones uh, have been laid out and then on the very edges I'm putting some brighter highlights I'm um, adding a lot of uh, lighter colors here and then I'm trying to create a balance between the light and dark and trying not not each of the elements to look separate not like globs of paint but rather like feathers and note the very important thing about painting birds or any animals is that you should pay very close attention to the direction of the feathers or fur all of them should go in one direction or more like a natural direction of the growth of fur that is a very important aspect if you get that one right no matter if you you know mess up the colors a little bit it wouldn't matter if you get your fur texture kind of right that then you have nail realism then nothing else need to worry about and the underbody and the top feathers of the wings I have put in a lot of yellow and brown elements and I constantly kept on mixing different shades of yellow and brown by um, varying the amounts of yellow and brown that I have in there and that that that's uh, what is rendering to it and then I adjusted the lights and darks I tried to make the darker shadow areas which is in between each layer of feathers very dark so that the contrast really stands out and some of the feather textures I really put in a little bit of extra work to show some more textures in some areas and create a lot of contrast because in this kind of painting where there is a lot of elements going on that's a very colorful background there is this hourglass and piece and there's the bird too so you need to give each element the amount of uh, um, importance it deserves so create a lot of contrast and that would uh, make it work anyways uh, do let me know if you found this painting interesting or not what are your thoughts about this i always appreciate any kind of feedback and comments that you would leave in the comment section below and do not forget to give me a thumbs up if you like this video feel free to share this video on all social media platforms and with all your friends and family if this appeals to you and if earth day means as much to you as it to me i think uh, we should celebrate these kind of events more importantly because we are coming to a very dangerous situation with our dear earth anyways back onto the painting so if you like it give me a thumbs up and share some like nice feedback if you don't like it feel free to let me know that as well i am always open to constructive criticism and if you're not already subscribed to my channel hit the subscribe button and do not forget to hit the notification bell because that is what will let you know each time i post a new video and that is all for this particular video so hit the subscribe button notification bell like and you know all the needful and most importantly just enjoy the painting i hope uh, you like this as well and i really am thankful to for you to hear all my ramblings and that is all for today and i will see you next week